Hello, Catch JS View for Family. Um, it has been a while uh, since I did a live broadcast like this. Admittedly, I've uh, been about the dirt. I've been about doing the work. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not a social media guru or any of those titles that you, you know you see people liking themselves to. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, practitioner, um, and the bottom line is when I think about you know my philosophy and how I go about doing things I'm really just about you know learning doing sharing what is it I do and helping other people level up that's what this is about and um, you know excited to actually have success stories and have um, growth and developments to actually share uh, with those who are tuning in uh, to this this broadcast if you will and um, I'm gonna jump right into it. So one of the things that uh, I've really been cognizant of lately um, is the ideal of pointing out a clear delineation between what it is to, to chase transactions and to actually be building a business. Because a lot of people just don't understand. It's just not one and the same. It's not the same thing. Um, you know, and I was reminded of that a couple experiences I had recently. There was a gentleman I have a lot of respect for. We kind of um, talk to each other, interact at arm's distance. We've done a little bit of business together, but to be transparent, up until recently, he never really took an interest in the work that I was doing in the community, and I know that, and I was okay with that. The bottom line is no one's responsibility uh, to wake up thinking about how they can help me build my business, right? So um, my responsibility is to go out there and do the work. That's the only thing you're entitled to. Um, and, you know, and if you're sending out the right vibes and bringing value to the marketplace, the universe will respond accordingly. But in any respect, I crossed paths with this gentleman and he asked me what I was doing. You know, the question that I always receive from him and many professionals that I work with, right? They, it's almost like a checkup, if you will. They want to see where you're at because <laughs> they want to see how far you've gotten or you want to make sure they keep you at arm's reach in case you finally catch uh, fire, right? They want to be close. But in any respect, you know, I responded to him that, look, you know, things are going fine. Things are going great. Um, that, you know, I was leveling up personally in terms of the type of work that I was doing. I was solving bigger problems. And so I was excited about that because we know if you're solving bigger problems, there are bigger paychecks. But more importantly, um, that I was creating more success stories. And that caught his attention. He says, what do you mean creating more success stories? And for me, I couldn't help but to chuckle, right? I didn't, of course, I didn't do it right in front of him. But inside, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm creating success stories. That's my objective, right? When I look at what it is that I do as an entrepreneur, um, as an SME, or just who I am as a human being, I've always been about helping other people level up and creating success stories, and that's what I told them. And that's what I'm most excited about. And there's a reason why I'm really excited about success stories, but I'm not gonna jump into that right now. But what I will divulge is I could see that he was both shocked, right? that I didn't spend all my time talking about my successes, but the successes of other business owners I've been working with. And for the first time, I could see he had a real genuine interest. And to see that response come over him, to see him for once, as opposed to me trying to set the appointment and get the lunch time to sit down and, and learn about him. Instead, he requested that I give him a phone call as soon as possible and have lunch with him. And I thought that was fascinating, right? And it was just a reminder that, look, People are looking for something substitute. They're looking for something beyond the hustle, right? Nobody wants to work um, 5, 10, 20, 30 years from now as hard as they did the previous 10, 20 years. You want to have progress. You know, I think most entrepreneurs are like me. At the end of the day, I don't mind hard work, but I want something to show for it, right? You want to build something that at some point takes on a life of its own where you're being compensated for work you don't have to do. Yeah, in the beginning, there are things that you have to do that you're not being compensated for. But if you're building a business as opposed to just chasing transactions, ideally what ends up happening is you look up and you build something that's growing independently of you. Um, and I think people are finally starting to understand that, right? You know, I sat down for another business owner. And as opposed to sitting down and trying to drive, you know, my product, my service, all the wonderful things about me down this business owner's throat. Instead, I spent the first 10, 15 minutes just forming 
the business owner. And what do I mean by that? Form, family, occupation, recreation, motivation, right? I just wanted to genuinely learn about this business owner's life. And I could see the look on one of my business partner's face. Like, what are you doing? We only have 30, 40 minutes with this person. Why don't we just hurry up and cut to the chase, talk about the product, talk about how the product can benefit the business owner, right? Highlight the, the major buying points. But I wanted to share a different approach. I wanted to show them something different. And so I asked about the family, what motivates them, what got them involved in the business in the first place. I asked them, you know, where do they see themselves three to five years from now, the type of recreation, the hobbies, the things they're going to be involved in. I asked them to project and tell me what are some of the things, the changes they know they need to make personally, and changes they need to make materially, and changes they need to make um, physically, so on and so forth to get to their desired goal. And after the first 15 minutes, the business owner simply asked me what it is that I did. You know, I said, you know, you've been basically plugging me, you've gotten all this information from me, tell me about you. And I responded not with, you know, look, we take business owners and wrap them around a network of business consultants and attorneys, and we do things like handle your IT and your marketing and your legal and help you with your tax and accounting, we help you become loan ready to acquire financing. I could have went there, I could have gone there, right? And all of that would have sounded well and good, but instead I chose to share my why. She says, what do you do? I said, we help business owners level up. Look, I believe entrepreneurship is empowering. And at the end of the day, um, if you feel the same way I feel in terms of, look, we, we, not everyone can be a business owner, but we need more of them. We need more business owners to level up. We need people to have more of an entrepreneurial mindset. If you're sick and tired of last hired and first fired, that's what I'm about. I'm about entrepreneurs being in a position to empower our community so we can kind of deal with that issue. If you're sick and tired of politicians not delivering, right? People who look like you doing a worse job than people who don't look like you. Let's just be real. Um, there's two ways to vote, right? You can vote at the ballot, which is very, 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 very important, but you can also vote with your own dollars. And being an entrepreneur typically means you have more disposable income. So you can support that candidate, right? It also is a huge, huge, plays a huge role in being, people being able to control what happens in their household, control what happens in, right at their kitchen table. And if you can manage and have agency over what happens at your kitchen table, then you can manage and have agency over what happens in your neighborhood, then your community. You can begin to determine how many liquor stores versus recreation centers um, are actually erected where you live, work and play. And that's what I'm about. I'm about helping entrepreneurs get to a point where we start creating an ecosystem. And we provide tools to help business owners do that. And once again, you should have saw the look on the other person's face across the table, right? <laughs> because she expected a sales pitch. My business partner was there, expected a sales pitch. And you know what resulted instead? That business owner looked at me and said, look, whatever it is that you're marketing, whatever product or service it is you have, I get it. You know, I know what you're about now. This, this is resonant. I've been looking for to work with someone like you. Whatever it is you're recommending, I'm in. And once again, my business partner fell silent, right? And, but it goes back to it once again, right? People are looking for something to believe in. At the end of the day, buying decisions are emotional. We use our rationality, we use our brains to rationalize why we make these decisions. But ultimately, the decisions we make um, are emotional. And people um, get to a point where they realize that, look, they want to be a part of something that they can put their life's energy behind. They want to be a part of something that they feel like really contributes to them, right? They want to feel like they're in a relationship or that they're building a relationship with individuals who are going places, who are helping people, who are significant. And I guess at the end of the day, what I would challenge fellow entrepreneurs and fellow sales professionals is to, is to reflect on that and understand how important that is. Because if you're gonna scale, if you're gonna build something that's gonna grow away from you, people aren't gonna stay close to you for the money. They can get that anywhere. You have to share a vision. You have to have a modus operandi. You have to have a spirit about you that people can actually buy into, right? That they can buy into emotionally, where they can see themselves growing by being close to you or being involved with you. And you know, I'll end with this. I had a conversation with uh, two young business owners a couple days ago. Similar thing, right? They're getting ready to start with the business, the graphic design um, business. They're getting ready to do some work in terms of vinyl production. They're getting ready to do some work in terms of 
be more involved in creative arts around the city. And once again, similar thing, I just sat down and kind of formed them to better understand uh, what it is they want to accomplish, what's motivating, what's most important to them. And I pretty much share the exact same thing, what I'm all about. And, you know, one of the business owners said to me, he said, you know, we've been working with consultants. We've been working with other entrepreneurs. And you're the first person that we actually really felt comfortable with. Like, we don't have a lot of disposable income. We don't have a lot of disposable revenue. But we feel comfortable with you. And whatever it is you're recommending, we're about that. And, you know, what I shared with them, I said, I'm appreciative. I'm humbled. I'm thankful for that. But look, here's the thing. Um, if you really want to judge whether you should be working with someone, oftentimes you listen to these quote unquote business consultants out here and if you're looking at them and you're watching them, the only one that's being edified is them. Is If they're the only one uh, leveling up, right? Financially or otherwise, and, and they're not bringing people along with them, in other words, they're not creating successors, um, that's a huge clue, right? That's a huge clue. And that's powerful. It's important to understand that. You know, at the end of the day, when I look at the work that I'm doing and the message that I want to deliver, right? At the end of the day, I will think about an apple orchard, right? And one tree in an apple orchard in and of itself is not all that significant. It may be only able to feed one family, right? And, and not for an extended period of time. But if you're in the business of creating and helping other people grow their apple tree, and you help other people build their apple tree, Soon you have a field of apple trees, right? You have a small collective of individuals who are out here leveling up, um, having a processional effect, kind of like a bee, like a bumblebee, and they're pollinating others, and they're creating an ecosystem of other healthy business owners, right? They're helping other business owners level up with their services, their wares, and whatever contribution they're making to the ecosystem, they're earning a living, right? And that's kind of how I view the work that I'm doing, and I look to network and I look to resonate, and I look to attract individuals who feel the exact same way. Because I'm confident that at the end of the day, if I continue to exercise this philosophy and work with individuals who have the same, eventually those couple apple trees turn into a field. And those couple fields eventually turn into apple orchards where it begins to take on a life of its own and now everyone's leveling up, right? A rising tide lifts all ships. And that's how you build a business. That's how you build a brand. And if you're going into a new venture with that attitude, it determines your modus operandi, it determines how you treat people, how you talk to people, how you show up, when you show up, right? Um, it determines all those different things. And it's just so absolutely imperative that you understand that right from the get-go. And if you don't, it's okay, because we all can evolve, we all can change. But that's the message that you know I would like to deliver to entrepreneurs and small business owners, right? Know that your why matters. Know that um, your motivation, your music matters. And know that it is really the biggest determinant as to whether or not you're just going to be chasing transaction, 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 day in and day out, versus actually building something substantive, something that will not only fill your belly, something that will not only edify you, something that not will only help you level up, but be about a business that helps other people level up, and then you'll have something that truly grows away from you, right? People who are invested in the mission, the purpose, and the work that you're doing, directly or indirectly. So, look, as always, you know, I encourage feedback. Um, you know, for me, feedback's like skills, right? Negative, positive, doesn't matter. It's feedback. It allows me to level up and become better, make sure I'm providing content, information that makes sense for others um, who are looking to, to build enterprises and the build empire. Um, so definitely, you know, leave commentary, a like, not like, hey, it's all good. Hey, leave commentary about what you like covered next time. Um, I go out and, and, and decide to step up and do a live post here or a live broadcast. Um, I'm all about um, serving individuals. And look, the best thing about what it is I do ultimately is you. So with that being said, everyone have a fantastic evening. Um, and goodbye for now.